Praise the Lord. Thank you for that. Brother Skyler, Miss Esther. Amen. In the depths of the sea, in the days coming, there will be no more sea. Our sins are gone. And gone under the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you're not saved, you don't know that your sins are gone, I want to tell you that you can uh, have your sins washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Matthew chapter 11, please. Let's turn there. Matthew chapter 11. One of the verses we're going to read is on our, bu on our bus flyer, on our kids' crusade flyer. It's Matthew 11, verse number 28. 11, 28. If your sins are not washed away, then you probably feel the burden, the weight of your own sin. And maybe you've tried a lot of different things to wash away that sin. Maybe you've tried religion, you've tried church, you've tried baptism or good works. I'm going to tell you none of those things will wash away your sins. The only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he shed his blood on the old rugged cross to take away our sins so we could be saved, so we could be forgiven. And uh, that's what this passage is about, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. He says, Come unto me, Jesus said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You feel that weight upon your own shoulders. He says, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I hope, as always, to be a help to you. I hope this will be a practical help, spiritual help, many ways. Uh, today, the title of the message is God Given Rest. Jesus said if you'll come to him, he'll give you rest. Heavenly Father, please speak to our hearts. Uh, help me to say everything you want said the way you want it said. May Lord, you use your word to speak to us and give us the rest that we need. And uh, Father, I pray if there be some lost soul here today, they feel the weight of their own sins. They realize they're under your condemnation. Help them, Lord, to understand you want to lift that burden today. You want to free them from it for eternity. So Lord, speak to our hearts now through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God given rest. Jesus said, come to me and I'll give you rest. Um, I've heard some friends, and I, I get what they mean. They said, I can rest when I'm dead. That's what they said. I can rest when I'm dead. And I tell them, if you don't get some rest, you will be. You know? <laughs> uh, so you might, you might want to take uh, that into consideration. Um, you know, God gave us rest for a reason. I want to look at several passages, as we always do. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The reality is that rest is a need physically. Um, rest is one of those things you can't, uh, you can't go without and still function properly. Um, you know, I don't think I'm preaching to folks who sleep all day and don't work at all. I think I'm preaching to folks who are the other way that maybe you need more rest than you get. Um, now, if I felt that we didn't work hard and were sleeping all day and hoping God would take care of the bills, I'd preach a different sermon. Um, but, but there is a fact that we need rest. Notice Genesis 2, 1 through 3. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And then look at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, look at verse number 9. Uh, Exodus 20, verse number 9. And this, this whole message is not about what the Sabbath is and what it isn't, uh, but don't, don't buy into this thing that says that that's part of salvation, that you have to obey a Saturday Sabbath, and, um, and that Sunday worships the mark of the beast. That's what Seventh-day Adventists teach, and that's false doctrine. I won't get into all that this morning. But Exodus 20, verse 9, he says, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Uh, God created us and we need rest. Animals need rest. Machinery needs rest. This thing of going 24-7 is not a good thing. One of the things uh, that came from uh, COVID that was a blessing was that uh, businesses shut down and people were able to go home. That was a blessing. Um, I want to remind you, 1 Kings 19, when Elijah 
had stood up for God and he had defeated the prophets of Baal that one woman, Jezebel, told him, I'm going to kill you. And what did he do? He ran off to the wilderness. And how did God help him? Well, God helped him. He was exhausted physically. He was exhausted. And in 1 Kings 19, he fell asleep under a juniper tree and the Lord woke him up, gave him good food to eat, told him to go back to sleep. And they woke him up again and gave him some more good food to eat. And he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights into Horeb, the Mount of God. But the point is this, he needed rest. He was exhausted. Physically, he needed rest. Psalm 127, 2 said, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Sleep is not wrong. It's a need. It's a necessity your body has. And in moderation, it's important to get a right amount of rest. 1 Corinthians 6, let me remind you, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And so the things we do with our body matter. We should take care of our bodies as much as possible. Uh, he says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you stay up Saturday night watching the late, late, late show and then you sleep through Sunday morning, you're not taking care of your body the way God would have you to do it. He wants you to, to be wise with what you do with your body. Your body needs rest. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says we have this treasure, the gospel, in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says our outward man perishes. Uh, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So physically we need rest, but is he just speaking of a physical rest? When he says in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Is he just talking about a physical rest? No, he's talking about much more important rest. Uh, we do need physical rest, but we also need mental rest. You know, it's a good thing. Uh, to turn off the TV at night or not have the TV on at all. It's a good thing to put the phone away and get off Facebook. I just hit somebody right in the eyes. I have it right between the eyes. I know I did. Um, it, it's a good thing to give your mind rest. You, you know why folks so much enjoyed going out fishing yesterday? I mean, it was, it was a blessing. It was. It was fun. But we're just out there by nature in God's creation and resting mentally and resting emotionally. Uh, but we also need spiritual rest. Uh, rest comes from Jesus. He said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Number one, we have rest in Jesus through salvation. That's only through Jesus. If you're here today and you're trying to work your way to heaven, you're a very frustrated person. And I'll tell you why, because you'll never be good enough. You'll never make it. So I'm going to get to heaven by my good works. You'll never make it. I'm going to get to heaven by being religious. You'll never make it. I'm going to get to heaven by getting baptized and and, uh, you know, treating people right. Well, I'm all for treating people right, and I'm all for getting baptized if you've already been saved. But what I'm telling you is if you're trying to work your way to heaven, you think your work's going to impress a holy God, you're going to be a very frustrated person. Because let me tell you how high God's standard is, first of all. God's standard is this. Listen to James 2.10. It says if we keep the whole law, imagine this, keep the whole law, God's law, yet offend in one point, you're guilty of all. Imagine there was a man, a woman, a boy or girl lived their whole life, never one time disobeying God. And then they got to the very last day of their life and suddenly pride crept in. They said, boy, I've been a really great person, haven't I? Suddenly that one sin, now they've broken all of God's law. What I'm telling you is you can never meet God's standard of perfection and holiness. And so there's a rest that comes only through salvation, which is in Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says it this way. It says, for by grace, what's that? It's undeserved favor. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What's a gift? Something someone else pays for, you freely receive. And then listen to the next verse. It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. What would happen if we had some work to do to get to heaven? We'd brag about it. We, we would, now, we might do it in, you know, in subtle terms, but we'd brag. Well, yeah, I made it to heaven. I, I did good. I did this. I did that. I went to church. I got baptized. Folks, if you're saved, you're only saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Titus 3.5 says, not by works, 
of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. What's mercy? Him not giving us the judgment we deserve. And notice, it's not by works we have done. That's what religion teaches. What can you, what, what can you do to be saved? What I'm telling you is it's already been done for you. Jesus paid the price on the cross. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 4, 4 and 5 says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. What does that mean? It means if you could get to heaven by your works, then God would owe you heaven if you did enough works. Does God owe you heaven? Does God owe me heaven? No. What Really what we're owed is death and hell. So if salvation were by works and you could make it, God would owe it to you. It wouldn't be a gift. God would be paying you. God would say, well, you did enough. Now you're going to make it to heaven. But listen to what it says. To him that worketh is re the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. God would owe you that. But listen to the next verse. Praise God. Here I am, a sinner who has nothing in my own hand to come before a holy God. Listen to what he says, Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You know what God just said? If you'll believe on Jesus Christ, the one who justifies the ungodly, who's the ungodly? Here's ungodly sinner number one. There's ungodly sinners number two through whatever. We're ungodly. How can we be justified? What's justified? Just as if I were never even a sinner. How? By believing on Jesus Christ for our salvation. God said there's a rest through salvation that's in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9, the Sabbath was a picture of that rest. And he says, Hebrews 4, 9, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his Listen, somebody who's truly saved, they don't tell you how good they are. They tell you how great their Savior is. Somebody who's truly saved doesn't talk about how they've been to church and they've gotten baptized and, and they've turned their life around. Somebody who's truly saved says, I'm a sinner, I was headed for hell, but there's a perfect Son of God, Jesus, who took my place. He suffered in my place on the cross. He died for me, was buried, he rose again. I've trusted him. He saved me, he forgave me. I'm saved only because of him. Somebody who's truly saved brags on Jesus. Somebody's lost pats themselves on the back. There's a rest through salvation that's in Jesus. Number two, this almost seems like a paradox, but it's absolutely true. There's a rest through working with Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then what did he say next? Take my yoke upon you. What's a yoke? Um, it's not the part in the middle of the egg. It's a different kind of yoke. It, it's, a, it's what two animals who are plowing together, they would, how many of you ever seen, how many of you know what a yoke is, first of all? Let me see. Here, here, let me tell the rest of you. Here's what it was. It, it's, that, it's that curved thing that sat on the shoulders of two oxen or two mules that tied them together and they'd plow a field together. That's a yoke. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. He said, I'm in the yoke, you get in the yoke with me. What do you do in a yoke? You work. So, but I thought we're talking about rest. We are. I'm telling you that we were designed to work long before the fall of man. We were designed to work long before the curse. In fact, work is part of the blessing of God. The key is what kind of work do you spend your life doing? What kind of work do you invest your life doing? There is rest through working with Jesus. Some of the verses I just quoted say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But now that we are saved, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you don't get the cart before the horse. We don't do good works to get saved. We do good works because we are saved. We do good works because we owe our lives to Jesus Christ. And there is a rest through working with Jesus. Titus 2.14 tells us that we as God's people are to be zealous of all good works. You can be exhausted in your life from hobbies, sports, travel, pleasure, TV, shopping, Facebook. I hit it again. 
So I'm so exhausted. Stop and really count up your time and see where that time is being wasted. I said wasted. Many times it's being wasted, not invested. So we get one life, one life. And there's a rest through working with Jesus. Say, Pastor, I'm just too exhausted to help with Kids Crusade. It might be you're exhausted doing things that aren't even going to matter in 20, 30 years. It might be you're exhausted. You know, say, I, I just don't have time to read my Bible. How much TV did you watch this week? I'm just too tired. How, how much of Gilligan's Island or whatever? What's the, what's the old stuff on TV? Gunsmoke. How much did you watch? I, I just don't have time for my prayer closet anymore. Pastor, I'd love to go soul winning. I'd love to. That is a great story Brother John told. In fact, I'll even clap for him, but... I don't have time for that. If you put the remote down, you might. Say, but that gives me rest, does it really? I'll tell you what gives you rest, what gives you joy, what gives you satisfaction is if, if you caught one like Brother John did yesterday. And there's a rest to the people of God. And there's a rest that comes through taking Jesus' yoke upon you. Um, Isaiah 40 says uh, even the youth shall faint be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that what's the next word wait upon the lord we take the word wait as if it's like we sit there and just like where's god you know i'm waiting for him that's not what wait means uh, if you ever go to a restaurant a fine establishment like white castle <laughs> no, no, a fine establishment where oh they used to be called now they're called servers they used to be called waiters, waiters. What does a waiter do? They serve you. So I want rest, I'm, I'm telling you. I know it seems counterintuitive, it seems like it's a paradox, seems like a contradiction, but I'm telling you there's a rest that comes from taking on Jesus' yoke and laboring with him for things that really matter. He said, take my yoke upon you. They that, even the youth shall faint be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, I bet Brother John, when he led that uh, person of the Lord, just I bet he got a new bounce in his step. Uh, I, sometimes when you see God do something great, you say, man, I feel like I'm floating on cloud nine. What happened? Did you take a nap? Suddenly you're rejuvenated? No, I'm going to tell you what happened. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Remember when it was noontime, Jesus was by the well? He hadn't eaten anything. The disciples came and said, hey, are you going to eat anything? He goes, I have meat to eat that you know not of. I said, did anybody give him food to eat? What, what meat was he living on? He was doing the will of his father. That was rejuvenating him, giving him energy and excitement. Listen, there's nothing more exciting than working with Jesus. You come next Sunday night, lead some child to the Lord and see if that doesn't rejuvenate your life. Give you a burst of spiritual energy that you were looking for. There's rest through salvation in Jesus. There's rest through working with Jesus. In Mark 6.31 Jesus told the disciples, come ye yourselves apart and into a desert place and rest a while. Physically, they didn't even have so much leisure, the Bible says, even to eat. And read the story, what happens? Now listen, again, think of this. They were so busy, they didn't even have time to eat. And Jesus said, come apart into a desert place, rest a while. The people saw that they were going to a desert place, and what did they do? They, they, they hurried and got to the place first. So Jesus shows up and the disciples show up. What do you think the disciples were thinking when the people showed up? Oh, you think they didn't? We haven't even gotten to eat yet. We're exhausted, Lord. And what did the Lord do? He taught them all day long. He taught the people all day long. And then to top off matters, at, at the end of the day, he turns to the disciples. He says, I have compassion on the multitude. He, he said, they, they've continued all day having nothing to eat. I think the disciples are probably thinking, Lord, we continued all day having nothing to eat. And he said, give ye them to eat. 
wait, Lord, didn't you tell us to come out here so we could get rest? He said, give ye them to eat. What happens next? So, Lord, we, we have a lad here who's got five loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? Well, put it in Jesus' hands and you'll find out. Put it in Jesus' hands and he break and blessed and kept breaking and handing it out, handing it out, handing out 5,000 men plus women and children were, were fed. What I'm saying is there's a rest through working with Jesus. There, there's a satisfaction that comes with being in the yoke with Jesus. By the way, it's okay to get weary in the work. Just don't get weary of the work. If you read that same passage, you know what happened to the disciples? They had seen it so much that their hearts got hardened. Oh, somebody was saved. We've seen that before. Oh, somebody, somebody's life was transformed. They're, they're free of addiction. They're free of this. We've seen that before. Folks, what I'm telling you is you be careful. Don't let your heart get hardened. There's a rest through working with Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. There's a rest through working with Jesus. Number three, there's a rest that comes only through spending time with Jesus, hearing his word and praying. What did he say? Come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And then what did he say next? And learn of me. Learn how I do things. Learn my meek and lowly attitude, my heart and my spirit, and the way I say things, the way I do things. Learn of me. I want you to look at this with me quickly. Luke 10, please. Verse 38. We have time. We have just a few minutes here. Luke 10. It might be, you say, Pastor, I am serving the Lord, but boy, I still get weary in the work sometimes, or sometimes if I'm not careful, I get weary of the work. Can I tell you what you might be neglecting? You might be neglecting, number three, there's a rest through spending time with Jesus. Just hearing his word, praying, spending time, fellowshipping with him. In Luke 10, 38, it says, Now it came to pass as they went that he, Jesus, entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Martha is not a lazy woman. Martha is a hard worker. She is working, serving Jesus. Verse 39, And she had a sister called Mary, which also, what's the next word? Sat. Is there a time to sit? Is there a time to stand and serve? Absolutely. Is there a time to sit? There is. Psalm 46. You know, part of the fishing yesterday, that was sitting, right? Just realizing how awesome God is. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Here, Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Martha's getting disgruntled. Mar Martha thinks she's the only one serving. Martha, Martha has a bad attitude right now. Do you know what she forsook? She forsook spending time at the feet of Jesus. You know what will happen if you get so busy serving, serving? Yes, there is rest through working with Jesus, but you need to stop and remember why you're serving. Who you're serving. You know, Kids Crusade will come and go next week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. By Tuesday night, you'll be exhausted. And you'll be thanking God it's Tuesday night. You know what? You want to remember why you're serving. Why are you serving? Because you have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves you, who died for you, who loves those souls that you're ministering to. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but what's the next word? One thing is needful one thing and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her listen I'm telling you one thing is needful that you spend time in the word of God with Jesus sitting at his feet hearing his word becoming more like him that you spend time in prayer with him you say I want something deep I'm giving you something that will last you your whole life long I'm giving you something that will help you survive the quitting places child of God rest through spending time with Jesus 
knowing his word in prayer. Um, some people still call it devotions. What does that mean? It means a closeness, an affiliation, a being devoted to someone. In Acts 4.13, let me remind you what they said about Peter and John. The Bible says that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they had been with Jesus. They said, boy, they, Jesus has transformed them. What did Jesus say? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, work with me. And then he said, learn of me, learn who I am, learn what I'm all about, become like me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Number four, last of all, let's go to Revelation. I want to look here, Revelation 14. There's rest through salvation that's only in Jesus. If you're here and you're trying to work your way to heaven, you'll never make it. It will never be good enough. You need Jesus and him alone. There's rest through working with Jesus. There's rest through spending time with Jesus. Don't let this be the only day you open your Bible this week. Don't let this be the only day you hear God's word this week. Number four, there's rest throughout all eternity in the presence of Jesus. Revelation 14, verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Look at Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Revelation 21, 1 through 7, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first earth, our first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and, Brother Schuyler, and there was no more sea. My sins are in the depths of the sea. Someday there'll be no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Look at Revelation 22. We'll end here, verses 1 through 5. Revelation 22, 1 through 5 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, that's Jesus, shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Now look at verse 5. And there shall be no night there. Why don't we need night? Because we'll have eternal rest. Eternal rest in the very presence of Jesus. We can't even imagine that. We're just used to working all day, getting tired, and being glad when it's time to go to bed. There's a day coming, there'll be no night there. There'll be no need. We'll be serving him and not growing weary. We'll be serving him and not growing old. There shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest under your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to Jesus. He'll give you rest. Let's bow our heads together, please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Who would say this morning, Pastor, if I died today, I know I'd go to heaven. I'm resting in Jesus. I know that it's not based on my good works. It's based on what Jesus did for me. I know Jesus suffered on a cross, took my place. He did the hard part. He paid the price for my sins. I know it. I know by his blood I'm cleansed of my sin. I know he died for me. He was buried. He rose again. I remember. I remember where I was when I called on him to save my soul. 
I remember the moment I believed on Jesus. I know if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I'm resting in Jesus. If that's you, would you raise your hand? If that's you, would you thank the Lord? Just thank him again for saving you. Heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed. Perhaps you couldn't raise your hand just a moment ago. I want to tell you there's a rest in Jesus that will only come in Jesus. Jesus paid it all for you. He paid the price. God made it so simple to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Rest in him. Rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Who would say, Pastor, I want that rest. I want to be saved. Here's my hand. Please pray for me. Lift your hand right now if that's you. I need to be saved. Lift your hand right now if that's you. Lift it up until I see it. Our heads are still bowed. Our eyes are still closed. Christian, there's a rest. There's a rest in serving the Lord. It could be that our flesh is weary just from chasing the stuff of this life. There's a rest in serving him. There's a rest in getting in the yoke with Jesus. There's a rest in spending time with him, fellowshipping, sitting at his feet, hearing his word. There's a rest in that. You go about your day tomorrow, it can start hectic and hurried. And I want to encourage you instead, spend some time with Jesus before you do anything else. It'll set the tone for your whole day. And then there is an eternal rest coming. Praise God. There's an eternal rest. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, who would say to the Lord, Dear Lord, I want to rest in you, not just for my salvation, but in serving you and spending time with you in your word. Lord, help me to have that rest in my heart. If that's you, would you lift your hand to the Lord? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you will give rest to your people as we serve you, rest as we fellowship and spend time with you. Lord, we look forward to that rest in heaven one day. And Lord, if there still be someone here, that if they died today, would be lost. I pray that they'll seek that rest from you today and trust you as Savior. In Jesus' name we pray.